Welcome to Paint and Peanut guys and in this video we're going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to produce a painting inspired by one of these stunning cockatoos. Coming up! Hi again there guys, I'm here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design and in this video we're doing a step-by-step -step tutorial so the paints we're going for today are just simply the white, the warm yellow, the cool blue and the warm red. So here I'm just putting the DIY gesso onto the canvas. If you want to know how to make your own gesso I will leave a link below guys where I show you the ingredients and how to make your own, it just saves an awful lot of money. And you can see I'm actually distributing this today with a sponge sponges i'm a big fan of and the actual background today we need this sponge here that's really going to help us blend this through so i do want this gesso to stay wet because it's really going to help almost create like a bokeh effect where we get a really subtle beautiful background you can also see here how quickly you can actually distribute paint when you're using a, a sponge i actually think in terms of trying to blend paint you actually have a lot more control than if you're just using traditional brushes. So I'm just using a nice circular effect here just to really create that bokeh effect. Maybe a little bit more blue on there just to have a bit more depth. No rules with this guys, just really having a combination of the, the red and the blue so we're going to have some nice purples going on. I also want it to be a very subtle almost pastel background to really help complement the subtlety of the cockatoo as well. The only thing you will notice is when you're using sponges like this, you are going to pick up some different colours. So I've just got a bit of blue underneath, but you can use that to your advantage. So I'm just going to keep blending these through. If this was dry, it would be so much harder to actually make these two colours blend. So it is really, really important that you work onto that white gesso background or that you've just done a line of or a layer of uh, acrylic paint before you start to put these colours through. Plus it helps to give that lovely subtle effect. So I'm just using a clean sponge here just to help blend the colours. It's a bit difficult when you're using a brush that, or rather a sponge that's got loads of pigment on there. So I tend to have three or four sponges to hand so that rather than having to clean those sponges, I can just grab a separate sponge to help blend them through. So you can see how subtle you can be here when it comes to blending, particularly when you're doing that circular effect. So I'm just going for a little bit of a darker, I'm thinking about the composition now at the bottom of the page. So I want to sort of have a darker pink in the bottom and a darker blue in the top. But again, it's all about contrast. So whenever you're doing your composition of a painting, you want to think about where the focus of the eye is going to go. I'm actually going to place the cockatoo in a moment just off center because it just gives it a bit more of a nice compositional feel. So the use of color here is almost being used to draw the eye to where I'm going to be placing the cockatoo. Just a few last little blends here just to be very subtle with the colours bleeding together. Now this does need to dry so I'm actually going to fast forward the video in a moment. I'll probably wait about half an hour to make sure it dries completely in the background. Now in terms of doing the actual cockatoo shape, you'll notice I'm almost treating my fine detail brush here like a pencil. I'm almost sketching the shape out, just but going straight on with the paint. I'm not a big fan of actually sketching using pencils on paintings because you always can see the line of the pencil. So I'd rather, much rather use paint in this context. So obviously if you're making a mistake, it's a bit more pressure. I don't really believe in pressure. I always think if you make a mistake, you can always just paint over it. But here I'm just doing some of the, the sort of the feathers at the top of the head. The other great thing as well, guys, when you come to composition, so in my head I know exactly where I want this bird to be. But 
you know, if you've got to be careful, if you start painting or drawing the fine detail first, you can actually end up either running out of page or you maybe find that your composition is too small. So it's really important that you do have an idea in your head of whereabouts you're going to place the entire object. Now you're getting an idea of where the actual composition is going to lay out so I'm now actually going to speed the video up for you guys just so you can really start to get a feel of how the whole painting comes together and uh, I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 